Welcome back and now for the news in detail. In Afghanistan, at least 23 people have been killed and 15 others wounded after four rockets hit a cattle market in Helmand province. In a statement, the provincial governor's office said the rockets fell at a market when hundreds of people were gathered there to trade sheep. The Taliban and the Afghan government have blamed each other for the attack. The UN has repeatedly called for a halt to the fighting and the start of the intra-Afghan peace talks as part of the Doha peace deal. Pakistan's Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi has pointed to India's involvement in the terrorist attack on the Stock Exchange building in Karachi. In a statement, Qureshi said the attack is linked to sleeper cells activated by India in some parts of Pakistan. More in this report. Three security officials were murdered in the attack on the Stock Exchange compound before security forces killed all four terrorists. Seven people were also wounded in the terrorist attack. Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi said India is trying to destabilize Pakistan, whereas Islamabad has reopened the Kartarpur corridor to allow Indian Sikh pilgrims a visa-free access to their holy site. He added that Pakistan will thwart India's nefarious designs and expose it on a global scale. Pakistan's Army Chief General Kamar Jawed Bajwa paid tribute to the security officials who sacrificed their lives in the incident. He said Pakistan will foil all efforts aimed at destabilizing hard-earned peace achieved through sacrifices of the martyrs. Meanwhile, China and the U.S. have also condemned the attack. In occupied Kashmir, Indian troops have martyred three more youths, uh, raising this month's toll to nearly 50 so far. The occupation forces martyred civilians during a cordon and search operation in Runipura area of the district. The operation is going on. The authorities have suspended mobile internet services and blocked all exit and entry points of the area. The occupied valley has been under New Delhi's crushing curfew and communication blackout for the past 322 days. In India, police have revealed that 11 places of Muslim worship were damaged during February riots in northeast Delhi. In response to queries under the Right to Information Act, Delhi police said eight mosques, two madrasas and one darga were damaged in the riots. The police said 11 FIRs have been filed in connection with the attack on mosques, madrasas and dargahs. It said 31 people have been arrested, out of which seven are released on bail and four charge sheets have been filed so far. The police said two FIRs have also been lodged and arrested two people in connection with attack on two Hindu places of worship. The details provided by Delhi police are different from the figure given by the Delhi Waqf Board. According to the Waqf Board, 19 mosques were damaged during the rites. Nepal's Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli has accused the Indian embassy in Kathmandu of being behind a plot to topple him. Addressing an event in Kathmandu, Oli said conspiracies are being hatched to ensure his removal after he released Nepal's new map. PM Oli, who is facing mounting criticism from within the ruling Communist Party and outside, said the Indian attempts to de-seat him won't succeed. This comes after Nepal issued a map that showed disputed areas of Kalapani, Lipilak and Limpiadura as Nepalese territory. New Delhi had earlier issued its revised map showing these areas as Indian territories. Saudi Arabia and the U.S. have urged the international community to extend a United Nations arms embargo on Iran. Speaking along with U.S. Iran envoy Brian Hook in Riyadh, Saudi Minister of State for Foreign Affairs Adil al jubair said letting the ban expire would allow Tehran to further arm its proxies and destabilize the region. He also accused Iran of using Yemen's Houthi rebels to carry out cross-border attacks on Saudi cities. Jubair said a shipment of Iranian weapons bound for Houthis was seized as recently as Sunday. He said Tehran seeks to provide weapons to terrorist groups despite the embargo. Echoing Jubair, Hook said lifting the ban on Iran will trigger an arms race in the region. Iran denies the arming groups in the Middle East and blames the regional tensions on Washington and its allies in the region. 
Iran has issued an arrest warrant for the U.S. President Donald Trump and 35 others over the killing of top Iranian general Qasem Soleimani. According to the state media, Iran's prosecutor Ali al-Kamshir has sought Interpol's help to arrest Trump. He said the warrants have been issued on charges of murder and terrorist action. The U.S. killed Soleimani with a drone strike in Iraq in January. Washington accused Soleimani of masterminding attacks by Iranian-aligned militias on the U.S. forces in the region. U.S. envoy for Iran, Brian Hook, said the warrant is nothing more than a propaganda stunt. Meanwhile, Interpol said in a statement that its constitution forbids it to undertake any such intervention. Yemen's human rights groups say the Houthi rebels have held over 20,000 people in hundreds of prisons across the country. In a presser, the Yemeni coalition to monitor human rights violations said the country went through its worst humanitarian crisis during the past year. The group said Houthi's systematic violations are responsible for half of Yemen's problems. It said tens of thousands of people who had challenged the Houthis' rule were being held in secret and known jails. The coalition said the rebels recruited 7,000 children and was responsible for planting landmines that had killed 6,000 people. Yemen has been entangled in violence and chaos since 2014 after Houthis overran much of the country, including the capital, Sana. UN rights chief Michel Bachelet has called on Israel to abandon its plans to annex settlements in the occupied West Bank. In a statement, she said the consequences of the annexation will be disastrous for the Palestinians and the region. Bachelet said Israel must listen to international calls, warning it not to proceed along this dangerous path. Israel is set to hold a cabinet vote on the 1st of July on the planned annexation of occupied territories under the U.S. Middle East peace plan. Palestinians have already rejected the plan. China says it will impose visa restrictions on U.S. officials who behave egregiously in relation for Hong Kong affairs. In a press conference, Foreign Ministry spokesman urged the U.S. to stop reviewing or implementing any Hong Kong-related acts. The move comes days after Washington announced similar restrictions on Chinese officials. The ministry said any effort by the U.S. to hinder Beijing's introduction of a national security law in Hong Kong will not succeed. Last month, the country's top legislative body approved the national security bill that aims to tackle anti-national activities after months of protests last year. The legislation would make it a crime to undermine Beijing's authority in Hong Kong. The global number of deaths from the new coronavirus has exceeded 502,000 with the infections crossing 10.1 million. The United States is the worst hit country with more than 2.5 million diagnosed cases and at over 125,000 deaths. Meanwhile, India has recorded nearly 20,000 new coronavirus cases and 380 deaths in a day as the outbreak worsens in the country. In Pakistan, 49 people died overnight, increasing the tally to over 4,167 with over 206,000 cases or in this report. Latin America remains the hardest hit region from the coronavirus pandemic, reporting the highest number of deaths and cases every day. Meanwhile, the U.S. is at risk of becoming the coronavirus epicenter again as cases surge in the south with Texas reporting more than 5,000 cases every 24 hours. The U.S. Health Secretary has called for a dire need for containment measures. But the window is closing. We have to act, and people as individuals have to act responsibly. We need to social distance. We need to wear fi our face coverings if we're in settings where we can't social distance, particularly in these hot zones. Russia's President Vladimir Putin has called on the international community to consolidate its efforts instead of exchanging accusations in the fight against COVID-19. China continues to report new cases in double digits as it undergoes the second wave of coronavirus. South Korea is also planning to introduce a three-level system of social distancing in the country due to a second flare-up of infections. Meanwhile, Iran has launched a campaign to motivate its rather reluctant public to use protective masks at all times.
People must observe health protocols to fight coronavirus and that we have no second choice. No cure or vaccine for coronavirus has been found yet so that we must observe the health protocols. Australia has seen the biggest daily rise in COVID-19 cases in two months. The state of Victoria has recorded 75 cases of coronavirus in the past 24 hours, raising major concerns regarding a full-blown second wave. It's time for a short break. We'll be back with more stories. Stay tuned. Welcome back in Poland. President Andrzej Duda takes lead in the first round of presidential election by getting about 46% of the vote. Exit polls show no candidate has achieved 50% of the vote needed for an all-out majority. Now, Duda will have to face Warsaw Mayor Rafal Trzaskowski in a runoff on July the 12th. Trzaskowski received about 30.5% of the vote. Final results from first round are expected to be released later in the week. Thank you very much. Thank you. The result is by far better than the one from five years ago and with 10 other candidates. Thank you very much for your support. But first and foremost, I would like to thank my compatriots for the turnout, for this massive participation in the election. I thank you with all my heart. In France, President Emmanuel Macron's ruling party has suffered a major defeat in second round of municipal elections. Exit polls say Macron's rival Europe Ecology Party has won a major cities including Lyon, Bordeaux, Strasbourg, Poitiers, Besançon and Marseille. This comes after first round of polling on March 15th failed to produce a decisive outcome. French Prime Minister Edouard Philippe was also elected mayor of northern port city of Le Havre on in a rare bright spot for Macron as he lost ground. While in French capital Paris, Mayor Anne Hidalgo also declared victory in a re-election bid. You have chosen hope. You have chosen to come together. You have chosen a Paris that breathes, a Paris that is more pleasant to live in, a city that is more united, that leaves no one aside. At least 12 people have died and 10 others are missing due to heavy rains in China's southwestern province of Sichuan. The state media said the rainstorm has triggered floods in the province. The state media said two cars fell into the river in the Gaoyang region due to the flood damaged roads. It said rescue and relief efforts are underway. Nearly 10,000 people are in the disaster area, while over 7,700 local residents have been evacuated. In Bangladesh, 30 people have died after a ferry carrying some 50 passengers sank in a river following a collision with another vessel. Officials say dozens are still missing as rescue operations continue in the Buriganga River, which flows past the outskirts of the capital, Dhaka. The vessel was hit at a Farish Ganj area near the country's largest river port of uh, Southern Ghat. Eyewitnesses say some of the passengers managed to swim to the land. In the Philippines, 14 people are missing after a fishing boat collided with a Hong Kong cargo vessel in choppy waters off the western coast of Mumbarao. Officials say the Philippine Coast Guard is searching for the missing people, but bad weather is impeding rescue efforts. The Coast Guard said the cause of the collision is not yet clear. It said a light plane and a helicopter have joined the Coast Guard ship in the search. Officials said the fishing boat was heading for metropolitan Manila when the collision happened. The damaged boat was spotted hours later, but there was no sign of the crew. The Hong Kong flagged cargo vessel with 20 crew on board was not getting any cargo at the time of the collision and was en route to Australia. Turkey's Coast Guard has said it has rescued 35 migrants from a boat found half sunken in the Aegean Sea and was searching for four more missing people. The migrants were rescued near a small island off the coast of Ivalik in Turkey's western Balkisir province. Greece has been the main gateway into the EU for people fleeing conflict in the Middle East and beyond. More than a million people reached its shores from Turkey from 2015 to 2016. Earlier this year, 
tens of thousands of migrants try to cross into Greece via land and sea borders after Ankara said it would no longer stop them. Turkey said it lifted restrictions on the migrants because it was alarmed by the prospect of another wave of refugees fleeing war in northwest Syria. The UK's think tank Green Alliance says an extra £14 billion are required each year to help London meet its climate commitments. In its report, the Environment-Based Policy Institute says cash is needed for clean transport, nature restoration and low-carbon buildings. It said over the past three years, £9 billion have been spent on projects that actually increase carbon dioxide. The report said the government plans to spend £28 billion on roads, which will increase CO2 emissions. It said the funding issue must be solved in the Prime Minister's economic recovery speech, which is expected on Tuesday. Pakistani nurse Onzula Iram puts on her apron, masks and gloves as she prepares for her shift in the COVID-19 ward at a hospital in Karachi. But it is not her experience as a nurse that puts her at good stead with the patients, rather the fact that she herself had caught the virus and recovered from it. But in this report. Onzila began working in the coronavirus ward after hospital officials started the facility following the emergence of first case in Karachi. Despite strict precautions, Onzila tested positive for the coronavirus and had to be isolated for 14 days. She says that's when she realized the pain and suffering of those affected by the debilitating virus. So then I decided. I realized what the patients must be going through. Then I decided and I promised to myself that whenever I rejoin my work, I'll focus more on how patients can contact their family in any way, or even I can convey their messages to their families. Notwithstanding the risk, Kunzala's father still sends her to work regularly and she is determined to provide better care for the patients under her charge. Her colleagues have also heaped praise on Kunzala for giving medical care to patients. Post illness, uh, her determination level and her empathy level has definitely gone up. Since she has gone through what the patients are going through and she can actually connect with them, at a better level, she can understand what they're feeling when they're saying that they are not able to breathe properly. Like the rest of the world, Pakistan is also struggling to battle the COVID-19 pandemic and many healthcare workers have paid a horrifying price in the fight against the virus. But the determination of nurses like Onzala shows patients in Pakistan are in good hands. In Spain, tourists are opting for inland holidays to avoid crowded beaches and cities after the country eased COVID-19 lockdown. Details in this report. The COVID-19 pandemic hit Spain harder than most countries with more than 28,000 deaths so far and a three-month lockdown that crippled its tourism sector that accounts for 12% of the economy and employs one in eight. As the country's holiday industry struggles to recover, Spanish holidaymakers are heading to the hills rather than going abroad. Regarding the international impact, we have noticed much less foreign tourism to the area because the borders are closed, so the inland tourism is being strengthened. Before people travel to Rome, Berlin or Paris, but currently we are going back. They are opening other options in discovering inland tourism. A campsite owner is banking on tourists abandoning crowded beaches in favor of rural peace and quiet. We are at the Ronda range of mountains among three natural parks, the Grasalema Mountain, Sierra de las Nieves, and the Park of Los Alcornacales, an amazing and privileged enclave. We are also very close to Gibraltar, to Costa del Sol. So this is an option now with the issue of coronavirus. We have benefited by tourism compared with that of the hotels. Though Spain has reopened its border to European tourists, the summer season is only tentatively resuming. Well, so is to follow right after a short break stitch. And the weather situation from around the globe. That's all for now with the latest updates. You can follow us on social media at Indus Talk News.